Okay, this video is for honors students uh, in geometry, those of you who will be honors algebra. Uh, I want to dive a little bit deeper into circles and uh, major arcs, minor arcs, the measures of those arcs, how it's related to the central angle, as well as chords. So we're going to do a couple of problems here in your book. Uh, and the link to your book is, um, well, actually right here. So you can copy that down, or it's also listed in our resources area in RenWeb. So, um, or you can follow along right here. So the first thing I wanna do is we talked about, back on page 49, back on page 49, number 13, we wrote the equation that described all of the points x, y that was five units away from this point, not the origin, but a point C1, negative four. And if you'll look back in your, in your uh, notebooks, you'll see that the answer to this turned out to be, when we use the um, distance formula to do this, uh, our answer turned out to be x minus one squared plus y minus a negative four squared equals 25. And so it's very similar to the equation of a circle that has its center at the origin. At the origin, the equation is just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And here you can still see the r squared. Uh, if our radius was five units, then five squared is 25. But what we also see here is that instead of just x squared and just y squared, we actually have polynomials here, something raised to the second power. And we simply plug in the point that we're using as our center. And that's how we offset this equation. This is how we offset this circle from zero, zero to a center at point one, negative four. So we came up with a general equation of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, you can't just write that and say, hey, that's my answer. Okay, you can't say there's the, there's the equation of a circle in general. Because I don't know what H and K are. I might not know what R is. So when you write this equation generically like this, make sure you say with center at H, K, there's our X and Y and radius r. Now, in general, we know that r means radius when we're talking about circles. But it's very important that you say with center at hk. Otherwise, I don't know what h and k are. So number 13 there on page 49, we did that one together in class. Go back and make sure that you have these notes, that you have this equation down correctly, and make sure that you know that this is the general equation of a circle with its center at hk and radius r. Okay, now I'm gonna move down and go to page 52. And let's take a look at 52.3. Write the equation of a circle centered at c equals negative two, negative five, with radius of seven. Negative two, negative five with radius of seven. Well, we're gonna do the same thing. X minus the X coordinate, which is negative two. So make that positive. Negative two squared plus Y minus the Y value of our center, of our center point here negative five 
squared equals the radius squared. The radius is 7, so 7 squared is 49. So that's the equation of the circle at negative 2, negative 5. That's where its center is, and its radius is 7. And of course, this says come up with the general description of how you write the equation of a circle. Given the center and the radius, you're plugging in the center point, the point of the center, into our equation, and then squaring the radius for the other side. It's as simple as that. There's no other secret to it. You just put in the center of the circle, put in the radius squared, and you've got yourself an equation of the radius. So make sure that you understand the equation of a circle not centered at the origin. Difference being that it's got some numbers in it. Um, and think about it, if we put in the origin, we get x minus 0 squared, y minus 0 squared equals r squared, and the minus zeros disappear. And we just have x squared, y squared, and r squared. So this equation works no matter if we're at the origin or not. Um, but especially when we're not, we need to see that the x and y value filled in right there. All right. So make sure you have that in your notes uh, and that you understand that for the quiz coming up on Thursday or on Friday, rather. The honors quiz is Friday. And to be clear, honor students will take the regular quiz on Thursday. You will take an additional quiz on Friday over these concepts. All right, next up I want to look at um, an annulus. So we had in our uh, vocabulary words annulus as a vocabulary word. And I think I can find it quickly here. There we go. So this is on page 65. 65, number three. Page 65, number three. Whoops. Just trying to move that out of the way. It's not working. Do not want to get larger. Thank you. There we go. All right. So an annulus is defined as the region lying between two concentric circles. There's another, um, there's another vocabulary word, concentric. Concentric meaning that they have the same center. So this is a circle within a circle. The diameter of the larger circle is 20 inches and the radius of the smaller is eight, assuming they mean inches there. Find the area of the annulus. So we're talking about then, they have the same center, then there's a circle, then there's another circle around that. Boy, those do not look like circles. But we're going to pretend they are. So it says the diameter of the larger circle is 20. So diameter, diameter goes all the way across as 20. And the radius of the smaller is 8. And so the area of the annulus, the area of the annulus then is this, this part out here, the difference between the two. Okay, when we talk about annulus, this is what we're talking about. This, this amount in between the two circles. So it would make sense then to take the larger area Right, subtract off the smaller area, then we've got the area that's in between. So what's the formula for the area of a circle? Well, the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So for the big circle, the area is pi 
times the radius squared. Now, what's the radius of the larger circle? 20? 20 inches? No. The diameter is 20. So our radius is half that. The radius is half that. So the radius is 10. So the area of the larger circle is 10 squared times pi. That's 100 pi. And on a quiz or a test, if we're using um, Google Forms or something that you're submitting electronically, you can write 100 pi like that because we don't usually have the pi symbol uh, to use. So our larger area then, 100 pi. What about our smaller one? Let's go over here where we have a little room. And the area is still pi r squared. And the radius of our smaller circle is, they say, 8. So the diameter was what they gave us first, then the radius. So the rate, the area here is going to be pi times the radius squared, and 8 squared is 64, so that's 64 pi. The area of the annulus then is going to be the first one, the 100 pi, minus the 64 pi, and that gives us 36 pi. 36 pi, and you don't have to multiply that out with 3.14 or whatever your calculator gives you. It's just 36 pi, but don't forget, don't forget units. They did say that the larger circle was 20 inches. We're assuming that that eight then is also in inches. And so this is 36 pi inches squared. So you can write that as inches squared square inches, or you can write it all out, inches squared or square inches, okay? So the annulus is just the area between two circles that have the same center. They have to have the same center. If they don't have the same center, there is no annulus. They must be concentric, concentric, same center, same center. And then you just subtract the smaller area from the larger, and there you go. Make sure to use units if they're given. In this case, inches squared, 36 pi inches squared. So that is an annulus. Now I do want to take a look at chords. And that's actually right here. Uh, let's see, let's go back to page 52. Back to page 52. Scrolling, scrolling. 52, and take a look at number two. Now this one has a diagram of circle O. Circle O has a diameter DG, so they're telling us DG is definitely a diameter. We are not believing our eyes on anything. Else. Circles are no different from any other figure. DG looks like a diameter, but if they didn't tell us it was a diameter, we cannot assume it's a diameter. So we do know that DG is the diameter because they tell us DG is the diameter. And central angles COG is 86. DOE, DOE is 25. And FOG is 15. That's this one. Find the angular size of some of these minor arcs. Okay, so we know that the angular size of an arc, arc sizes are reported in degrees just like angles, and they match their exact angles. So if I need to find the angular size of CG, it's going to be exactly what its central angle is, and its central angle is 86. So the angular size of CG, 86 degrees. CF, well, CF goes through G and on to F. So I've got 86 plus 15. So CF is gonna be 86 plus 15, 101. 
and it is degrees. We measure arcs in degrees. So CG is 86 degrees. CF is 101. What about EF? What about EF? Well, we know that DG is a diameter, and that means it cuts the circle exactly in half. So that means 180 degrees. And if we're trying to find between E and F, we need to subtract off the 15 and the 25. We already know. So that leaves us 140 degrees for EF, 140. And remember, you can back this up and, and play it again if you're not um, getting things quite as quickly. Back the video up, play it again. And then we're going to look at the major arc D, G, F. So this starts over here at D and goes all the way around D, G, F to here. So we know we've got 15 here. We know we have 86 here, but we don't know what this is. So how can we find that? Well, we know that D, G, again, diameter. So it is 180 degrees. And we've got 86 there for COG. So the measure of this angle, COD, must be 180 minus 86, which is 94. So this one's 94. So if I'm looking for the measure of this full arc, D, G, F, D, G, F, uh, that's going to be 195. My addition is correct. We've got 94 plus 86 plus 15. So 86 and 15 gave us our 101, and adding 94 to that gives us 195. So as long as we're looking at central angles, angles that have their vertex at the center of the circle, at the origin, then we're able to measure those arcs, whether they're minor arcs or major arcs, by the measure of that angle. They are exactly the same, exactly the same. So if you have any questions on this, drop me a comment. And otherwise, um, I will see you in office hours, or you can give me a call on my Google Voice.